Good morning, everybody. It's going to be a good day. We're right here in Kenora where we left off last night. If you guys didn't see yesterday's video, you got some catching up to do. We're going to go pick up our load and we're going to head down to Brainerd. We have to pick up today and we have to unload today. So it's going to be a rush to get there. After that, we can sort of take it a little bit more easy. And we've got to head down to Minneapolis to reload tomorrow. We've got a lot to do. Let's get to it. Seriously, where does all this dust come from? I dusted this last night, I wake up, there's dust again. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, rock and roll. Old Blue's ready to go, I'm ready to go. So get our load. It's a load of, uh, I guess they'd call it engineered lumber. Or it's just, Finished lumber, we gotta tarp it. Well, that's no problem. Looks like it's turned out to be another beautiful day. We'll see what the day brings. But the morning has been great. Not too hot, nice and cool, but not cold. I oh, there's a deer. Look over here, up here on the right. Oh, a bunch of them. Just on, off to the right here. Where are they going? They going? Are they going for a swim? Wow. Right in town. This, uh, this is a truck route, but they didn't really make it big enough for At trucks. The road, about take the second exit. So we don't want to go that way. We're not allowed to turn right here. We'll go left. Turn on our left signal here and then now we're going to be turning right we turn on our right signal so that guy knows that we're going that way and we're going to have to wait for traffic because I need that whole road to get under the bridge oh I got to stop and wait okay we're going to say thank you thank you attention like that. In 500 meters, slight left on, Veterans Drive, Highway 658 and then, slight left in 80 meters. It's even nicer when engineers build roads that are big enough for the vehicles that are going to be using it. In 300 meters, slight left on, Veterans Drive, Highway 658 and then, slight left in 80 meters. Just the perfect morning. But it is getting that, that cool feeling. Like, like I said, not cold, but cool. Might be a sign of things to come. Slight left. Oh no, I think that's a pretty hard left there, Karen. Like that's, that's a right angle, that's a hard Turn left. left. Slight left, all the way, all the way slightly, slightly hard left. I slept down at the co-op there because uh, 
we're not allowed to park at the petrol pass. Though a lot of guys do anyways, and nothing ever happens to them. And maybe nothing would happen to me if I parked there too, but there's signs all, all over there. Slide right on, Trans Canada Highway, Highway 17A. Signs all over the Petra Pass parking lots. There's no overnight parking, no truck parking, and it's a very, very small lot. The guys do it anyway, but you know, I just I don't want to get woken up in the middle of the night and told to move. I play it safe. We are loaded, tarped, and ready to go. Thanks to Jake over there, my co-workers who helped me tarp this up real quick. Really appreciated that. We got this done with two tarps. So there's one, two, and there's not much of an overlap here, you'll see. You see that? <laughs> About four inches overlap. So I got the strap on here holding this tarp down. And then got a little bit of a lower stack back here. So I put two straps over here just to stop the tarp from flapping too much in the wind that's our load he's also going to Brainerd uh, to a different location though and then we're gonna probably see each other again tomorrow we're both reloading in Shakopee okay okay and just so you know this cooler I bought this cooler fridge is working great very happy with it very happy. Ice cold water. Waiting for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's nice. That's nice. Ice cold water. Mm. Oh, you can definitely tell the difference from my other cooler. This would be just cool water, which I thought was great already. Now, okay cold water mm. happy with that purchase mm. yeah. okay we're loaded up we gotta go but we we gotta go we have to unload today yet and it's it's, oh, it's already the days are already coming going by I'm a little quick <sighs> don't want to look like a traffic cone driving down the highway, but I don't have to. Maybe 79,000 pounds. I've got 5,000 kgs on my steers. I've got 15,200 kgs on my drives and 14,900 or about 15,000 kg on my tandem trailer. Yeah, about 78,000 pounds or so, that's what I'm thinking. Fully loaded for the United States. We could still put a lot more on if we were staying in Canada, but not allowed to haul as much in the States. Coming up to one of our favorite blindside corners. And all the tourists in the area now too, just flying through here. So we're turning right, and traffic coming from the left is coming from around the corner at, oh, who knows how fast supposed to be going 90 kilometers an hour most of them are going mock Jesus do our best put the don't hit me flashers on It's usually not 
does make me a little nervous that I can't see very far. since the beginning of time so uh, we all gotta wait with everybody else here looks like we're kind of moving ahead pretty steady and hopefully it doesn't take too long I, I don't have a lot of extra time to get to my customer Good old blue. Get it? Yeah. Made it to Brainerd just in time to be unloaded today. I had to be here before 4.30 and I got here at 4.20. Uh, I'm that guy today. I'm your favorite guy showing up 10 minutes before you close. But I did call ahead, okay? In my defense, I did call ahead and I let them know, okay, here's, here's the thing. 
I know you guys close at 4.30. I'm probably gonna be there at about 4.20 or 4.30 on the dot. What do you say? You wanna unload me today? Would you be so kind? Ask him real nice. I said, yeah, sure, why not, Josh? Come on down, we'll get you unloaded. And they actually helped me. So uh, I got here, I got in, got my tarps off, rolled up, got all my bungees put away, got my straps put away, and I was out of there in half an hour. It's the fastest time ever. The, they gave me a hand and helped out, so that was really awesome. So, like I, like I always say, you know, you just gotta ask. You have not, because you ask not. I could have just been like, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't show up. It's rude to show up right before closing without calling, okay? I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. I called. I called ahead and I said, okay, oh, it's, it's, what do you think? I got lucky and uh, got unloaded today. Empty flat bed behind me. So now I have to go to Shakopee, Minnesota on the southwest corner of Minneapolis for tomorrow. My appointment is at a beautiful 5 p.m. Tomorrow. Five, that's a P, not an A. 5 p.m. As soon as I saw that message on my computer, I called up my dispatcher. I was like, is that a typo? <laughs> Please? <laughs> I don't mind if I gotta wait till 5 p.m. I really don't care whatever I mean but I'm gonna be sitting there all day so uh, he said no 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 don't worry about that we had to put in a time that's the only time they had available but very often they can sort of sneak you in if they have cancellations or if there's you know if they're ahead of schedule so he says most likely you'll get in earlier than that I'm like, oh, okay okay he's gonna call on my behalf and uh, and uh, try to see if we can weasel myself in there into line some somewhere throughout the day before 5 p.m. If not, well then, it is what it is, right? You have not because you ask not. It doesn't mean the answer is going to be yes, and if the answer is no, you have to be content and okay with that. The answer might be no. But if you don't ask, the answer is definitely no. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask. What's the worst I can say? No? Okay. Then you got to be okay with no? And we'll get loaded at 5 p.m. We'll see what See what can happen. We'll, we'll see what we'll see what we can what we what we can work out. I'm stopping at Blue Beacon tomorrow. I'm very excited. I'm gonna get the full package, the full package wash on Old Blue, and get all this dirt and grime off of here. It's I know I've let it sit on there for way too long. It's just one circumstance leads to the next one, leads to the next one. I know. I don't believe me. I know better than you. I, I this is my baby. I know. Hopefully we can get the shine back to it tomorrow. A little bit of help from them, maybe some chemicals. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know. don't worry, don't cry. Don't cry. It'll be okay. It won't hurt. I promise, it won't hurt. Gotta get that belt replaced. <laughs> belt slips every time the fan comes on. And it goes beep. Keep forgetting. Gotta switch that fan belt before it switches itself, you know, and snaps on me. Ah, yes, it's always something. It's always something. Let's go. Got two and a half hours. I want to get through Minneapolis, St. Paul, or Minneapolis tonight yet. Because I don't want to deal with the traffic in the morning. Minneapolis is crazy. Some of you live in Minneapolis, I know that. And that's why you're so happy. All the time, because you live in Minneapolis.
left on I-94. options in my mind. We're going to go to the first one closest to where I got to pick up tomorrow and then we'll work our way further away. I might have to go all the way out to Belle Plaine, which is about 20 minutes down the road. But I've got the time, so I wanted to see how close I could get. But look where I had to park. A rest area. So yeah, I'm parked here at a rest area. Rest area is actually full, but they have parking along the uh, side here. So I picked a spot right underneath the light. So that old blue is nice and lit up here through the night. It's a little bit frustrating finding parking. So I went into Shakopee there, right? I went to the McDonald's. Uh, they have some truck parking there. I was like, oh yay, they had some truck parking available. I pull in there and I read the sign. And the sign, it's a nice sign. They're politely saying, hey, this truck parking is for McDonald's customers only. And please keep your stay to 30 minutes or less. There's only like five spots, right? And go. Okay, well, you know, they asked nicely. They put up a sign and they, they said they'll tow you. They probably wouldn't tow me, but whatever they asked nicely and just for the sake of people coming in the morning for their like mcdonald's coffee they're gonna want some parking there in the morning and i shouldn't be plugging it up there parking overnight especially when there's signs right next to me that say hey no overnight parking so i said okay i'll respect that so i went down the road to this next truck stop just west of shakopee what is this uh highway 169 there's a holiday in holiday express uh truck stop anyways has about 20 spots or so for trucks and it was half empty. I pull in there and I was like, oh, look at this half empty, I got a parking spot. But I noticed every parking spot had a number, like a sign with a number on it behind it. I'm like, that's odd. Truck stops don't usually have numbered spots. And I look at a sign across the way, so I park in one, number four. And I walk out just to check like, okay, if they're numbered, this is weird. I bet you anything it's paid parking, I bet you anything. So I walk over, I see a sign, they're like, all parking is reserved and you have to pay to park. Like, okay, let's go see how much it is. So I walk all in there in a good mood, whistling to myself. I go up to the desk and go, hey, I just wanted to know about the parking. Are we allowed to park here overnight? I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's it's $25 US. It's like $30 Canadian. One night from here, from here, I can also see the entire rest area over there. So as soon as somebody leaves, I know there's a spot available there, but I kind of like where I'm at here right now. It's on the side here. We're allowed to park here and uh, it's quieter, right? I will have drivers driving back and forth past me here, but at least I won't have someone like idling right beside me all night, right? So anyways, I mean, I hope you like my story. I'd really like to know what you, what you think of that situation. Like, ah, uh, is $25 reasonable? Was I wrong to sort of laugh at that? I mean, they were serious. I thought they were joking. They were serious. We already have a crisis in parking. There's not enough parking spots for trucks that are on the road in both Canada and the United States. We need more. In the Midwest here, it's not as bad. 
it's more on the coast. You guys who drive up and down there, you know how bad it can get. It gets pretty bad. Can't find parking. So I don't think the answer to the parking crisis is to charge $25 a night. Right? I mean, I get it. I get it. The owner is capitalizing on the land that he has available. Drivers need to park. Someone's going to pay. So I'm... I'm I don't know what to think about that. I would like to think that if I owned a truck stop, that I would go out of my way to make parking free. So that drivers have a place to lay down their head at night. But I get the temptation. I get the temptation that business owners will get when they know there's a high demand, that there's more trucks than there are parking spots, and it's tempting to put that little price tag on the spot, right? make make a lot of money really quick like that and people will pay it because we're forced to stop by government regulation so someone out there's going to pay it i get it hmm anyway i'm good so have a good night everybody i hope you join me for another day tomorrow we're going to try to get in sooner than 5 p.m just down the road and then we'll head home stay safe Drive safe and be safe.